Am I on the air? Do I have everybody's attention now? Do I have everybody's attention now? Don, I got you. Don, I Do I have everybody's Sunday attention night. now? He put them cameras on me, then you must be willing To get that heart touched, this a must-see feeling The news ain't good, then it must be villain So I say it's tag grounded, I don't trust these feelings Spread across your nose, and I'm on your air High as next on the cloud, am I in the air? Sunday night's prime time, I flex my better Voltron transform to DX Don, mega and off-scene You probably think I'm nice, cause I flow like a stream To your wireless device, and the smoke full of steam on any given night, how short like a piece of any given slice. Uh, and for the latest and what is best about I, tune in and tune the rest out, Don. You gotta tell them, am I in the clear? Is this thing gone? Am I on the air? On the air. What is going down, my friends? Welcome back to another brand new edition of Am I on the Air? I'm your host, Don Mega, and I welcome you to the show. It is season 18, episode 27, and tonight's show is titled, Here I Come. Wow. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We had a great episode last week with Spidey Has Fallen. Uh, I loved that episode, just really getting into the nitty-gritty of the Spider-Man situation between Sony and Marvel. If you didn't get a chance to listen to it, I highly suggest you go back and check out last week's episode, Spidey Has Fallen, and listen to that discussion. It was pretty awesome. Uh, Speaking of Spider-Man, I'm going to take a quick sec to talk about the extended cut That just hit theaters. That's right. Sony decided to put out an extended cut of Spider-Man Far From Home. Which originally most people said, oh, it's got four minutes of additional footage. And then some um, people started coming out saying, no, it's actually seven minutes of additional footage. And I said, damn, seven minutes? All right, let's check it out. So me and the fam went to go check out the Spider-Man Far From Home extended cut because I love the movie. So I was like, you know what? If I go back and it gives me seven extra minutes, it's cool, man. My daughter loves the movie. It's just a fun time. So I was like, let's go watch Spider-Man. Man, and we did, and there's no way in hell there was seven minutes of extended footage at all. There's no, no way. So I'm gonna go with the original articles that said it was four minutes because that makes more sense to me. Um, in a nutshell, most of the footage that is extra came from the earlier part of the movie, which I believe is going to actually be a short. That is on the upcoming Blu-ray and digital release. Most of the new footage was Peter getting ready for his trip. Uh, If you've seen the movie, you know that he's going on a trip to Europe. So uh, the extra scenes that were in the movie were pretty much stuff you saw from the trailer. Him going to the store and picking up his passport. Him going to the store and buying some, you know, toothpaste and deodorant and stuff like that for uh, to pack for his trip. And then, if you remember in the trailer, there was, of course, the action scene where he's in the Iron Spider suit kind of fighting some mobsters at a restaurant. That scene is in there as well. Other than that... There's not much extra. Um, I I felt like there might have been a little bit of an extended um, action sequence at the end when, um, well, I don't want to spoil it for anybody, but in the big action sequence at the end of the movie, I felt like it might have been extended just a tad, and I caught one extra scene with Jake Gyllenhaal as Mysterio. Um, other than that, that's about it. So I'm going to say, I'm going to go with the four minute spot. Now, it, will I say it's worth it to run out to the theaters and watch it? No. Um, but if you've never seen Far From Home or if you just love the movie and you want to go check it out again, this is a great opportunity to do that and get a little bit extra bang for your buck. Um, now, like I said, the movie is coming out on digital here pretty soon. It's actually going to hit digital in just a couple weeks, actually in two weeks on the 18th. 
Um, it's going to hit digital, and then it won't be on Blu-ray all the way until October. So, sorry, friggins. You're going to have to wait until October because uh, you're not cool and hip like the rest of us who get digital, and we'll have it in two weeks. Um, so, yeah, I've already pre-ordered my copy. I'm a little bummed because I read some of the details about what is going to be on the Blu-ray and the digital copy, and I don't see anything that says you can actually watch the extended cut. Um, which I would prefer to watch the movie in the cut that it was during the extended version, because I like the additional scenes. I thought it was actually pretty cool. So, I'm a little bummed. I'm hoping still, fingers crossed, that that might actually be something uh, that you can, the way you can watch it when you actually buy the movie. Um, if not, it looks like they are still going with the idea that there is a short called, like, Peter's Pre trip plan or something like that which will pretty much be all of these scenes in the beginning that we talked about um from him picking up the passport to go into the store and then fighting crime at the restaurant um so i have a feeling that they they took that stuff out and they were going to do this little special thing on the blu-ray and then somebody at sony said you know what we could just put it back in the film and then release it in theaters and people will go back and see it again like don mega and they were like oh cool let's do that <laughs> and they did so you know, so that's just my real quick review. It's a great movie. I love this movie so much. Um, I've, like I said, I've already pre-ordered my digital copy, and um, we'll see. We'll see. Hopefully it has the extended cut on there, because I would love for that to be the actual version of the film. But I have a feeling that they're going to just leave it as the little extra on there, and then leave the movie as the theatrical cut, theatrical cut that we originally saw. Okay, uh, so, uh, on top of that, I do have an actual new movie review for you guys, which is Ready or Not. Now, Ready or Not was a movie that came out about two weeks ago. I did not get a chance to see it on its opening weekend, um, but I really wanted to go check it out this past weekend, because nothing else really came out, so I said, let's go see it. And I gotta shout out my boy Geeky Pat, um, who did not want to see this movie whatsoever, and I just said, come on, man, there's nothing else playing. We got to go see Ready or Not, right? So he finally was like, okay, we'll go watch it. And then he even dragged his poor wife to go watch it as well, too. Um, <laughs> and uh, so if you've seen the trailer, you know what's up with this one, man. It is one of those, like, it's in the horror vein, but it's not quite horror. It's more thriller, gore thriller. Um, but it's also very, very funny. Um, and if you've seen the trailer, you know that it's it's a girl who's getting married into this very wealthy family who also owns this um, game dynasty. And it's tradition that every time a newlywed couple gets married, uh, that at midnight they play a game. And it turns out that they end up having to play hide and seek. And... In the movie's um, weird, twisted way, hide-and-seek is the one game that turns out to be pretty much, you go hide, and we're going to try to find you, and if we find you, we're going to kill you. And, um, yeah, it's a little batshit crazy, and um, I loved it. I thought it was a really fun movie. Um, it's silly as fuck. Uh, you know, the thing that bugged me a little bit was most of the really cool kills were in the Red Band trailer, so there there wasn't any super cool kills or anything that really happened that I hadn't already really seen in the Red Band trailers. So that was a little bit of a bummer, but I still enjoyed the way it played out. I enjoyed the way the story played out. I think when you see the movie and you hear kind of the premise and it all kind of comes together, it makes a little bit more sense than the way the trailer presented it, which is a good thing. Um, but it is just one of these silly you got nothing better to do kind of movies, a uh, big bucket of popcorn and a soda, and you just sit back and you laugh and you enjoy yourself. Uh, and that's what I did, man. I, got, I had fun with Ready or Not. I, it's not a movie that I'm going to say is amazing. It's not a movie that I'm going to tell you, you better run out and see it tonight. It's not that kind of movie. But if you thought the trailer looked intriguing, I think you will like this movie a lot. And I think you should go check it out. If not, wait till it hits home video or digital and give it a watch at that point. And I do think you will enjoy it. Uh, it gave me some fun times. And uh, especially the ending. Wow, and out of nowhere. So uh, I enjoyed it. So three out of five stars for me for Ready or Not. 
you know, it's good. It's good. It fits that three-star scale perfectly, and uh, take it for what it is, man. I know Geeky Pat, he didn't like it as much as I did. I think he gave it about two stars. Uh, he thought it was just okay. It had its moments. But I, I had a I had a blast with it the whole time. I thought it did exactly what it set out to do. So there you go. Three out of five stars for Ready or Not. And that's why tonight's show is titled Here I Come, uh, just to kind of tag on to that. All right. With our reviews out of the way, let's shift gears. Let's get into our news of the week. Now, I, I missed this part in my promo at the beginning of my intro. Um, we are broadcasting a day late. Yes, I'm broadcasting live from the um, Best Western Studios in Cottonwood, Arizona. I am recording um, out of the field tonight. Once again, I'm on location uh, I'm not in the lovely Red Dragons Radio Studios in Tucson, Arizona tonight. I'm in the Best Western Studios in Cottonwood, Arizona, doing some work. It is a Tuesday. It's September the 3rd. Uh, we normally do the show on Mondays, and uh, I just knew I'd be out of town tonight and I'd be having some time here at the hotel, so I decided to hold off and record tonight. So you guys are okay with a one-day delay. and um, But without any further delay, let's get into our news of the week, why don't we, okay? Chin Han and Huroku Sanada have joined the Mortal Kombat movie. That's right, every week we're starting to get more and more towards Mortal Kombat, which I absolutely love. And uh, Chin Han is actually going to be playing Shang Tsung. And um, Hiroku Sanada is going to be playing Scorpion. That's right. So there we go, man. We got our Scorpion now. We got our Sub Zero. We got our Raiden. We got our Shang Tsung. Um, this we got our Sonya Blade. We got our Jax. This movie's starting to shape up, and it's going to be rated R. And it's going to have fatalities, and it's going to be oh so glorious. Alrighty, so we'll keep you posted on what goes from there. Michael Bay is set to direct a new action film for Sony that's going to be called Black Five. All that we know about this movie is that it's going to be high on action. And if that's the case, you got the right director for that, man. I'm very happy about that. Michael Bay, Black Five, working on it for Sony. Taika Waititi is actually in negotiations to join James Gunn's Suicide Squad. Oh, what a great addition it would be for James Gunn to have Taika Waititi in the Suicide Squad. Hope that one ends up panning out. Himesh Patel is set to star in Christopher Nolan's upcoming movie, Tenet. Uh, The CW's Batwoman is coming soon. We got a new teaser trailer and poster out for that. Titan Season 2 has released its full trailer. Season 2 debuts on the DC Universe this Friday on September the 6th. And I'm looking very, very forward to it. I really dug Titans. I'm a little bummed. The only thing that bums me out about it is that this is a weekly kind of show where I really just want to go into the weekend and binge watch all of it. So I'm going to have to wait. But I really, really liked the trailer here for Season 2. I think it looks great. I think it looks like a big step up from Season 1. So I am down. Mark Wahlberg is going to be reteaming with his contraband and two guns director, Balthazar Kormaku, for a new upcoming family adventure called Arthur the King. So very cool there. I do like two guns. I didn't care for contraband very much, but I love two guns. So we'll see what he does with that. Top Boy is going to be returning to Netflix with new episodes, and it's going to be six years after the last season aired. Isn't that crazy? So six years later, Top Boy returns to Netflix with ten all-new episodes. There you go. Chef Eddie Wong is set to write and direct a coming-of-age drama called Boogie. Um, I like Eddie Hong. Uh, this is he's the inspiration for Fresh Off the Boat, and which is a show I absolutely adore. And I'm glad to see him doing his own thing. Venom Two cinematographer has officially confirmed that Woody Harrelson is returning for Venom Two. I think pretty much this is a no-brainer. I kind of assumed this was going to happen. Of course, they teased Woody Harrelson as Cletus Cassidy, aka Carnage, in the end post-credit scene of Venom. So why would he not be in Part Two? Um, but you know, it looks like we got that confirmed thanks to the cinematographer Robert Richardson, who's working on Venom Two. Eva Longoria is set to direct, wait for it, the true story about Flamin' Hot Cheetos. That's right. Uh, actually, the true story about the Flamin' Hot Cheetos creator, Richard Montanez. Um, 
Do we need a movie about the Flaming Hot Cheetos? I don't know, but hey, good luck to even Longoria. I'll always have a soft spot for her hotness. Kevin Feige says that Kit Harrington's character could have a future in the MCU beyond the Internals movie. That's right. He's going to be playing Black Knight in the Eternals, but Black Knight might actually have a bigger future across the MCU, so we'll have to see how that plays out. We have the first trailer for The King, starring Timothy Chalamet. You can check that out. A Black Lady sketch show has been renewed for season two over on HBO. Leslie Jones is officially leaving SNL, so this is a bummer. I mean, it's a bummer, but at the same time, I don't feel like SNL uses Leslie Jones very much, so it's you're probably not going to really notice it. Um, but you know what? I wish her the best of luck. I do like Leslie Jones, and... Um, Good luck on her future endeavors. Also, Kate McKinnon is going to be staying, which is always a good thing for SNL. Altered Carbon has brought on Leela Lauren from Power to play the governor in Season 2. Demi Lovato is going to be joining Will and Grace's final season. Ooh. Um, Supermarket Sweep reboot might actually be the first post-SNL gig for Leslie Jones as she might actually be hosting the Supermarket Sweep. Uh, Keenan Thompson is also going to be sticking around for SNL. He was the one everybody thought was going to leave this season, and he's sticking around with Kate McKinnon, but Leslie is out. The Midsommar Director's Cut has hit theaters this past weekend, so if you want to see some more of the weirdness that is Midsommar, you can check out the extended Director's Cut. Lauren Graham is returning to NBC with Zoe's Extraordinary Playlist. We have the brand new Joker trailer. That's right, that came out a couple days ago, and it's phenomenal. I love the trailer. I'm still... On the fence about the movie just being a Joker movie, just because, once again, it's hard to wrap around that there's no Batman, and it's very, just doesn't really have the connections that I want it to have, and it's just this kind of weird spinoff, but at the same time, I know it's going to be an incredible movie. Early reviews have already started hitting, and I'm hearing about standing ovations, I'm hearing about award nominations for Joaquin Phoenix, for the director, for the for the movie. I mean, this movie is going to be big. And, uh, trailer's cool, man. The trailer is cool. Kurt Sutter is actually set to exit FX's Mayans MC after season two. He's the co-creator and showrunner, but he's going to be leaving, um, even if the show is renewed for another season. The Girls on the Bus, Greg Berlanti and Julie Pleck are adapting Chasing, uh, Chasing Hillary as a Netflix series. Hill House's Henry Thomas is joining Netflix's The Haunting of Bly Manor. The Irishman, which is the upcoming um, Martin Scorsese movie that's coming to Netflix, officially clocks in at three and a half hours long. Oh my god. Three and a half hours, man, for The Irishman. I don't know, man. People are going to have to tell me how amazing this movie is. um, Because I don't know if I can do three and a half hours of this. It's even sitting at home on the couch. I'll probably pass right out. Uh, So please let me know if it works or not. Tell Me a Story Season 2 has just added Garcelle Bouvais to play the Wicked Stepmother. Uh, This is a show I definitely want to get into. I actually just signed up for CBS All Access um, recently. And um, this is one of the shows that stood out to me. I definitely want to check it out. Tell Me a Story. Very, very interesting. We have the first trailer for The Spy, which is the new Sasha Baron Cohen show coming to Netflix, which is actually him being very, very serious. This is not a comedy, so don't be looking for that. Um, It's a very interesting trailer. Check it out if you haven't seen it. We have the brand new trailer for Terminator Dark Fate, which is awesome. This is the trailer that they should have led with. It's so, so good. Arnold's in it. Arnold's, I'm back. I'm back for the Terminator Dark Fate. I cannot believe it took this long to put out the new trailer. I know everybody was talking about I'm going hunting from the first trailer, but I said, hey, wait for the second trailer because that is when I'm going to show up as the T-800 and I'm going to fuck some shit up. So check it out, the new Terminator Dark Fate trailer, which hits theaters on November the 1st. 
Thanks, Arnold, for jumping in. Arnold's always a great guest that just loves to jump in whenever we talk about his projects. And uh, you can check out the new poster up on our social media, our Instagram, and our Facebook. And check out the new trailer, which is just so damn good. And you can even check out my trailer reaction on Stardust. That's right, remember Stardust. Follow me on there, Don Mega. Dylan O'Brien is joining Mark Wahlberg in the new upcoming action thriller, Infinite. Merrily We Roll Along. That's right, Stephen Sondheim's musical is being adapted into a movie. Richard Linklater is going to be directing it, and he's going to be pulling one of his boyhood kind of uh, deals here. When he made the movie Boyhood, he filmed it over ten years, so he could use this boy in the movie from when he was little all the way till he was a teenager. And with this movie, he's going to film it over 20 years. That's right, 20 to make this new movie. So don't expect to see it anytime soon. Um, But he is making this damn movie over 20 years. I just need to stress that. 20 years to make this damn movie. It is insane. Um, But yes, he wants to do it over that timeline. And... uh, Go to it, man. Richard Linklager, um, along with Jason Blum's Blumhouse producing, Ben Platt and Beanie Feldstein are set to star in the project. So, there you go on that. Castle Rock Season 2 is coming in October over to Hulu. There's no plan for an It Chapter 3 just yet. The director says, uh, you never know, and they could be coming back. He says, plenty of more stories to tell for Pennywise, so I would love it if we got a third one, especially something new and unique, and you don't have to base it on the book. I would be so down, man. Let's do it. It Chapter 3. Nothing in the lines just yet. We will see. Amy Heckerling is directing royalties for uh, Quibi. That's coming up soon. Uh, Blumhouse has finally released some plot details for their Invisible Man movie, so if you want to know more, check out our social media. Okay, what else we got? Morgan Freeman, along with Frank Grillo, are set to lead a new action flick called Panama. Netflix says they have no plans to develop a wrap-up movie for the OA, so sorry guys, it's just going to end the way it ends. We have the new trailer for The Aeronauts. American Princess has been canceled after just one season over on the Lifetime Network. Queen of the South has been renewed for season five over on the USA Network. The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills has added two new faces for season ten. That's right, Garcelle Bouvias, who we just talked about earlier for Tell tell Me a Story, and Sutton Strack have been added for season ten. Netflix's Marilyn Monroe movie is officially titled Blonde, and they're rounding out their upcoming cast here with Adrian Brody, bon, uh, Bobby Cannavale, and Julian Nicholson will, long, will star alongside Anna DeArmas as Marilyn Monroe. Kyle Richards is returning for Halloween Kills as Lindsay Wallace. That's right. She is actually playing the same character that she played all those years ago as a little girl, now in her adult version, which is awesome. So very cool that Kyle Richards is coming back for that. Mike Flanagan is also wrapping up the casting for his Haunting on Bly Manor, so check that out if you're interested. Carrie Mulligan is joining Ralph Fiennes in the new Netflix drama called The Dig. There's a new crime drama called Unsound, and they've just brought on Anna Kendrick to star in the lead role for that. Vince Vaughn and Catherine Newton are going to swap bodies in the new Blumhouse thriller. That's right, you heard me correct. It is a yet-to-be-titled swapping thriller called Blumhouse, where Vince Vaughn plays a serial killer and somehow ends up getting swapped with Catherine Newton's character. So yeah, a little Freaky Friday there, but in a horror vein, so that'll be very, very interesting. Andy Muschietti, director of the It movie, has officially confirmed, yes, that The Flash is going to be his next movie. This is awesome right here. We heard the rumors that Andy Muschietti might actually be directing The Flash, but then it's kind of gotten quiet again, so it's nice to hear directly from Andy himself that he has signed on and that The Flash is the very next movie he's going to work on. Thank you. We're finally moving forward on this Flash movie. Please do not leave. I think Andy is the right director for this project. Give me my Flash movie, please. 
We got some new Birds of Prey images featuring the Kick-Ass Ensemble, so check that out. James Cameron says the Terminator Dark Fate could be the start of a new trilogy. Of course it can be, because why not? The Obi-Wan series is reportedly set eight years after Revenge of the Sith. We have a pretty cool TV streaming service guide that we posted up on our Twitter a couple days ago, talking about Disney+, Plus, Netflix, Apple TV, Hulu, and a bunch of other options, so just kind of seeing, you know, the best picks and what you should put your money into, so check that out. Legends of Tomorrow, yes, Terry Chen is set to play a 1990s roaming Genghis Khan in an upcoming Legends of Tomorrow episode, so very cool there. Uh, let's see, sorry, just skipping some shit here that I don't need to talk about, give me just a second, sorry about that. Uh, we already talked about that. Da, da, that. HBO's Watchmen. I know a lot of people have been wondering, when the hell is that coming? October 20th. That's when it's coming. October 20th, HBO's Watchmen TV show will debut. Glenn Turman is joining the fourth season of F- FX's Fargo. Peter Capaldi is also joining James Gunn's Suicide Squad sequel, so that's pretty interesting. Emily Blunt and John Hamm are joining Jamie Dorman for an upcoming movie called Wild Mountain Time. Okay. (laughs) We got some Titan Season 2 character posters, which are pretty cool, along with some character posters for It Chapter 2, which I love. I love the It Chapter 2 character posters because it's all the adult actors holding a balloon in front of their face, and the reflection in the balloon is the kid version of what the adult actor is playing, which I love. It's very, very cool. Robert Pattinson finally breaks his silence on being the new Batman, so we got a pretty cool article up we just posted earlier today talking about um, Robert Pattinson talking about being cast as the Dark Knight. We got a pretty cool article up also talking about the differences between the Mandalorian and Boba Fett. That's right, because there's a lot of comparisons between the two coming for the Disney Plus streaming service, so check out that article if you want to see some of the differences between the two. A24 is developing a new fantasy TV series based on Ursula K. Le Guin's Earthsea. Dave Bautista is officially suiting up for Gears of War 5. That's right. Um, On September 15th, his character will be a DLC playable character in Gears of War 5 that will be available to download. So very cool. We all know Dave Bautista loves Gears, wants to make a Gears movie, and this is the first step of him getting involved in the franchise is being a DLC character in the upcoming game, which is pretty awesome. We have the new trailer for Jojo Rabbit, along with the new trailer for Hustlers, which comes out next week. I'm looking really forward to that. Ewan McGregor is set to play iconic designer Houston in an upcoming Ryan Murphy Netflix series that he's doing. Apple has canceled the plans for a new Richard Gere drama called Vigilantism, so that's been canceled out. Uh, Riverdale has announced that season four, uh, I believe the season premiere is actually going to be the Luke Perry tribute, so that'll be awesome. WandaVision cast promises a bonkers show that will go where the Marvel films could not go. So they're making me so intrigued about this damn show. I cannot wait to see what they end up doing with WandaVision. And Priyanka Chopra is set to star in an adaptation of The White Tiger for Netflix. And that, my friends, is the news of the week. Look at that. We did it in under 30 minutes. I love when we keep it nice and tight. Let's get to our releases. Out on Blu-ray and DVD today is Men in Black International, Ma, and Booksmart, uh, which have already been out for weeks on digital. In theaters this week on Friday will be It Chapter 2. I'm looking so forward to checking that out in IMAX on Friday. And here's your top 10 box office. Coming in at number 10, it's Spider-Man Far From Home with $5.5 million. Number 9 is The Angry Birds Movie 2 with 5.6. Number 8 is Dora and the Lost City of Gold with 5.7. Number 7 is Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark with 6.3. Number 6 is Ready or Not with 7 million. Number 5 is Overcomer with 7.8. Number 4 is Fast and Furious Presents Hobbs and Shaw with 8.2. Number 3 is The Lion King with 9.3. 
Number two is Good Boys with 12.1. And number one again for the second week in a row, it's Angel Has Fallen with 14.8 million. So congratulations to Gerard Butler and team for having two weeks in the number one spot. That will all come to a close this Friday when It probably breaks all box office records for It Chapter 2, which is going to be such a huge hit. And I cannot wait to see that this weekend. Even though it's almost three hours long, I'm ready for it. Well, my friends, that will do it. Thank you so much for tuning in with me and joining me as I record out of market, on the road, on location. I thank you so much for taking the time, as always, for listening to this show and supporting me and Am I on the Air on a weekly basis. I really appreciate it because I only do it for you all Um, because it takes a lot of time out of my busy, busy life. But I do it because I love it, and I do it for all y'all. So thank you for supporting. Thank you for listening. Let's do some shout-outs. Our official webpage is amiontheair.com. Make sure you follow us on Twitter at amiontheair. You can follow me on Twitter at dxdonmega. You can, of course, like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash amiontheair. Get us on Apple Podcast. If Apple Podcast ain't your thing, that is okay, because we're also available on Spotify, iHeartRadio, YouTube, Spreaker, Stitcher, TuneIn, Google Play, Google Play Podcast. We are all over the interwebs for you to listen to this show anytime you want. All right? Uh, let's see here. Instagram. We already talked about YouTube. You can find us on social medias all over the world. Just search Am I on the Air? And of course, our great affiliates at RedDragonsRadio.com. Red Dragons Radio is an awesome website that has a bunch of different podcasts from just people like me that just want to get the word out about different projects and, and different values and views and just have a good old time doing what they like to do. And uh, so support it, you know, support other podcasters and check it out, reddragonsradio.com. Am I on the Air is always streaming on demand on that network. And follow on Twitter at Red Dragons Radio. That'll do it for me on this Tuesday, September the 3rd. We'll hit you up next week talking some more movie news and, of course, reviewing It Chapter 2. I cannot wait. I know Andy Muschietti is working on some super cut of It Chapter 1 and 2, which will probably be like five or six hours long. It's going to be insane. So, uh... Have a great week, everybody. We'll catch you on the next time. And uh, take care of yourself and each other. And until next time, y'all. Peace. Bye, everybody. Red Dragons. Red Dragons.